Look, I know you're upset because the others are calling you dumb, but they don't mean anything by it. It just means that you don't have a chip in you, okay? You're just as beautiful and energy efficient as they are. So don't let that bother you, okay? All right, now let's go out front and string you up. Hi, welcome to Canis Bader Christmas. In this episode, I want to cover dumb RGB lights. Now, Hans Electronics is sponsoring this episode, so stop by and give out a little love. Uh, if you are a U.S. citizen, Independence Day is just around the corner, so happy Independence Day. If you don't know, the United States birthday is basically July 4th, 1776, commonly associated with fireworks, parades, barbecues, uh, carnivals, fairs, picnics, concerts, baseball games, and family reunions. The key point being fireworks, meaning that my dogs are probably going to be very upset Wednesday night and possibly earlier, depending on when my neighbors obtain their fireworks. Yay! Dumb RGB lights are LEDs just like pixels, but they don't have the chip in them, so they're not individually addressable. Now what that means is, instead of being able to change the color and intensity of each individual node, the entire string lights up the same all the way down the line. Now, why would you want that? Well, a couple reasons actually. Number one, these are very simple to control with something like an Arduino. You just need three available pins, transistors and resistors, but other than that, it's a pretty simple circuit. Now, if you're using these in your display, it keeps the channel count lower and or simplifies your sequencing efforts a little bit. When you get to the point of having thousands of pixels, you're going to be pushing a lot of data and dumb RGB lights might be an alternative for you or at least help you drop that channel count down if that starts to become a problem. For example, if you wanted to put a bunch of lights on your roof line or your eaves, uh, or you live out in the country and just want to light up a large area but still coordinate it with the rest of your display, you can do that with a single pixel, a string, or several strings of dumb RGB lights. Now, it used to be that dumb strings were much cheaper than smart pixels, but that really isn't the case anymore. They're still cheaper, but not by much. So I'm going to show you how you can control these with an Arduino, or you can use these in your display with a board from Hanson Electronics. For this demonstration, I have an Arduino Uno and an Ethernet shield connected to three NPN transistors and resistors controlling a 24 volt string of dumb RGB LED strip. The circuit diagram looks like this. Uh, I got this diagram off makezine.com and I'll link that in the description. It's a very simple circuit. I'm planning to use this strip on my backyard fence and control it with my home automation infrastructure. I'm using the UNO and Ethernet shield just to prove it can be done. I, I tried using one of my ESP modules but it kept losing the Wi-Fi connection so it either may not have enough unused PWM output pins or I was just using the wrong ones which is also very likely. If you want to use dumb RGB lights in your display, I'd suggest checking out the 2811DC15 or 2811DC30 from Hanson Electronics. The 15 can control 5 dumb RGB strings and the 30 can control 10 dumb RGB strings. It's actually 15 or 30 channels, assuming each string uses 3 channels. You come out of one of the ports on your controller and the controller treats it like it's a string of WS2811 pixels. These boards have a data input and a data output, just like smart pixels, so you can daisy chain several of these boards together to allow you to run more strings, or you could hang a string of WS2811 smart pixels off the output if you wanted to. Now two of these three pin data connectors are included with your purchase. 
The boards accept anywhere from 5 volts to 35 volts DC and can handle up to 3 amps per channel. They're shipped with a 10 amp fuse, but you can safely replace that with up to a 30 amp fuse if you need to. For those of you good at math, you're probably thinking, okay, max load per channel is 3 amps, but the max load per board is 30 amps. So you can't use all outputs at max load as that would exceed 30 amps. You are correct. It's typically not a problem though, as most of the loads will be under 2 amps. But just keep that in mind when connecting these up. Now, on the output side, there is the plus terminal coming from the power supply that you connected to the input power terminals, and then a red, a green, and a blue channel, and then it repeats. Now be sure to check the manual for more information or if you're using a single channel string or something other than standard dumb RGB strings. And by standard I mean it's got a single positive line and then one wire for each color. If you are running these at 5 volts there is a jumper on the board that needs to be installed. If the jumper is not installed you won't get data out and the channel outputs will be unpredictable. Also, with this jumper installed, anything higher than 5.1 volts applied to the power terminals will damage the board. Just keep that in mind if you have different voltage strings and are kind of swapping them out. Also, you can only run one voltage at a time, so if you have 12 volt strings and 24 volt strings, you'll need two different boards to run them at the same time. I have an X-Lights demo set up here to output a single pixel which will drive the board and drive the dumb string. I set the pixel size on the model to 100 so it shows up as a huge pixel on the preview. You don't have to do that, I just did it for this demo. So you can see, you can run a massive amount of lights with a small number of channels. You could also bring data in from one of Alan's 2811 pixel testers to create a very simple setup. You know, get you some dumb strings, a 2811 pixel tester, a 2811 DC 15 or 30, and light up your campsite! <laughs> Thanks again to Alan at Hanson Electronics for sponsoring this video. I hope this information was useful. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.